higher one. In our last lesson, we saw what decentralized applications bring to the table. And in this lesson, we are going to see where these decentralized applications lag so that we can have a more objective perspective on Web3. Even though it brings a lot of things to the table, there are a lot of situation and a lot of problem around Web3. And we should know both sides so that we can know what we are dealing with here. So in our previous lessons, we said that blockchain consists of decentralized nodes. I know my nose doesn't look very good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, let's say we have many more. And this is our blockchain system. Let's say this is our blockchain system. Here we have this enclosed system. To get any information from outside, let's say this is the real world or outside, meaning outside of the blockchain, we need oracles. So without the oracles, we cannot get data from the outside. And many of these data are really essential to have a full functional programs in 2023. So this is one of the most obvious fields where Web3 and decentralized applications lack. And the second one is about the private key. So we are using private key to create our wallets and to sign transactions. But if we lose our private key, there is no coming back from it. We can lose everything. So as you can see, in the sense of a technology, it's very secure. But once we have this private key and we shouldn't lose it at all costs, this situation creates a very risky circumstances. And this is another place where Web3 lacks. Since we don't have a centralized authority here, we are seeing that this decentralization also brings some problems where before the centralized solutions were solving. And the next one is we have to pay for each of our transactions if we are updating the data on the blockchain. So what we are doing, as we said, if we have a user here and we know who this user is, with a very, very long hair this time, Jackie. And she wants to interact with the blockchain, so she needs to pay gas fee. Not because she's interacting with it, but she wants to alter data on the blockchain. This is a little bit problematic for us because we are not used to pay to update data on the internet. But this also has another side. The one of the biggest selling points of Apple these days is saying we actually value your privacy. So with Apple products, what we are doing is we are actually paying a little bit more money for the products so that we can pay with our money instead of giving our data. So with more of open source operating systems like Android, in the Android ecosystem, the applications are more free, but the data retrieval and the usage is more. So this is actually one of the idea that Apple has been pushing for the last couple of years. And here we can see it in a much more strict way. And our next problem is, even though Jackie here is interacting with the blockchain, she has to wait for the transaction approval. Since we have a consensus mechanism on the back end of this transaction, we need to wait for this mechanism to finalize its result. And that creates a delay. And in many situations, the speed of the process is very important. So this can be also very problematic. And also we have usability issues, meaning that to do all these, we need to have a couple of steps. Let's say this was Ethereum. And to use a decentralized application for the first time, what we need to do is to create a wallet. After creating the wallet, we can get Ethereum. Then we need to sign transactions. For that, we need to use a signer, let's say MetaMask for this example. And only after that, we can communicate with our decentralized application. It's a little bit complicated process for an average user to getting started with using decentralized applications. And this is a big downside here. But on the other 
side of the situation, what we have is with this address, we can actually use it in every application, every decentralized application on the Ethereum blockchain. After doing this for the first time, then we have a very convenient way to log in into an application without needing a separate password or separate account for each application. Imagine that you have one account that you can use all over the web, and this is what it is. So as we can see here, Decentralized applications and centralized applications has their ups and downs. What we need to do here is instead of choosing Web2 or Web3, we can actually create a system where we are utilizing Web3 side and Web2 side. Because Web2 have pluses, which is minus for Web3, and Web3 has pluses, which is minus for Web2. By combining these together, we can have the powerful side of each of this technology so we can have the third and the new iteration of the web. One of the good examples for this is decentralized finance. We can actually create our business logic, everything in a centralized way. But we can save the transaction records in a decentralized manner so that the user experience would not be affected with the downsides of Web3 and also we would have a more secure and transparent economic system behind our decentralized finance application. So as we can see, it's not Web2 versus Web3, it's Web3, which is the new iteration of Web2. So they go hand in hand. This will be all for this video. Thank you very much for sticking with me until the end. And hopefully I will see you on the next one.